otherwise known as Mystery of Diamonds and welcome to my channel. Alright, so this is week two of, of Luna or Luma. Woo! Lumina. I'm thinking of my dog. Of Lovely Lumina. Hashtag Lovely Lumina with two capital L's. And this is my progress so far. Um, I have got I have blinged her out. <laughs> I'm even running out of some of the sparklers and may have to order more. All right, um, before we get started on this, I want to go ahead and uh, make a quick announcement. Um, we did uh, where you had to fill out the form and make a comment on the first whipping chat with me and uh, I will announce those winner or that winner at the end so you'll need to pay attention and you know stay tuned till the end of the whipping chat so that you can find out who won um, and I'll show you what it is that uh, you've won I mean it's not huge you know but it's it's a small little giveaway it's it's something okay so let me turn on my light because you know kind of need light to see by because my eyes don't see great without it <laughs> all right um so i told you the last time about my uh substitute teaching experience oh and boy was that something let me tell you but let me today I was going to go ahead and tell you like about my uh, student teaching experience as well as my first year um, now with uh, student teaching you know what it is is when you're in your last and we call it interning student teaching when you're in your last little uh, semester of college for te you know for education um, they expect you to go into a classroom and to be there for oh, sorry about the camera be there for half the year uh, so that you can take over the class at points and be able to um, like have a full experience but having a uh, experienced teacher who is what we call your supervising teacher having them uh, there to answer any questions or help you with any hard things that you're going through um, now when I was going to college um, I knew that I wanted to teach uh, middle school or high school I mean I knew I wanted to teach secondary but unfortunately the school that I was going to go to um, it was just honestly too far away for me to drive uh, and be able to go to class so I had to choose another alternative and the school close to me didn't have math or science uh, education programs but they did have um, elementary education and so even though I knew that I didn't want to teach elementary education I did go ahead and select that option because I thought you know I could still learn a whole bunch and the reason I stuck with an education um, major is because uh, here in Florida if you have an education uh, degree then you get what's called a professional contract and um, that's a lot that's a lot better than a temporary con contract you know so I wanted that professional contract and I thought you know even though it's elementary education it would still it could still be beneficial to me and I'm telling y'all right now guys I think that elementary education should be something that a lot of teachers look into as far as even if it's just to get your um, 
uh, your degree because I learned so much that believe it or not I have used in both middle school and in high school um, I you know I learned how to teach a kid to read from the very beginning you wouldn't think that you would need that in middle school or high school but you do I learned how to teach hands-on math which I use all the time that's one of the things that makes me successful in math um, hands-on science same thing you know and ooh, had a little boo-boo and you know it's something that I am so very glad that I did um, do not regret it in the least so um, I was going through for like I said for elementary education and so all of the classes that I was having to observe in were um, you know elementary classes and that was okay you know not a problem no issues uh, then when it came time for me to have to choose my uh, student teaching thing my teacher said the only thing is that I had to choose a class or a grade that taught all of the subjects since I was doing elementary education and whoo y'all I am a math and science person I am not a history person I'm you know not a language arts person um, even though I read a ton a ton a ton I'm still not a language arts person so I was like okay so what is the highest grade that I can do this with and still be able to um, not be you know at the you know and still have a little bit higher level so to speak so I chose fifth grade because um, fifth grade where I am was the the farthest one the oldest group that was going to still do um, all the subjects okay and once you choose that then your next thing is to choose okay do you want to do the beginning of the year do you want to follow the beginning of the year do you want to follow the end of the year um, and there's benefits to both I mean uh, but personally I chose beginning of the year because I remember being in school and we had a substitute teacher or uh, not substitute we had a uh, student teacher and she came in in the middle of the year and it was it was hard to look at her as an authority figure simply because we had been with our teacher all year you know and she had just shown up and so we kept deferring to uh, you know our our actual teacher and so because I had experienced that being a student I said you know I want them to recognize me straight off and see if you do the beginning one they go ahead and they pair you up with your teacher for um, the beginning of the year you like you get to go through preschool uh, in service you know like what happens before school starts you get to experience that you get to experience setting up the classroom um, open house greeting your students getting a chance to and, and they get a chance to see you first off with the teacher and like they have no preconceived notions like you are one of their teachers you know they they just accept it so I chose beginning of the year and um it was really cool to to go to these uh preschool in services because i noticed something that was you know a little shocking to me but funny at the same time and i still notice that to this day which is you know sometimes teachers make the worst students and let me explain why and I say sometimes not all but let me explain why um, you know one of the rules in, in class is you know do not be on your phone you're not supposed to be looking at your phone you're not supposed to be talking to your neighbors you know you're supposed to be paying attention to the lesson um, yet almost every in service that I go to some of these same teachers who are extremely strict 
about the the phone issue are on their phones while we're being presented material or they're talking to their friends or, or they're you know writing notes back and forth and I shake my head because I'm like I'm, I'm not one that gets on my phone but I shake my head because I'm like wow we really don't make great students sometimes um, okay but you know maybe not every teacher in service maybe y'all don't experience that maybe that's just the teachers where I work um, <laughs> but the other thing is that they you know they teach you about new uh, curriculum that's coming in or additional stuff they now want you to do in your classroom and of course as a as a student teacher you know I'm like trying to soak it all in and not quite understanding which I don't come to understand uh, a lot of the changes and how fast it is until you know years later but uh, it was still rather interesting in my opinion um, then you got a chance to go set up a classroom and when you set up an elementary uh, school classroom you know there's there's a lot more involved in that than there is in setting up a regular class like a like a high school classroom um, because you have you know they they their the elementary classrooms are so much prettier to look at and they're bright and they're colorful and you know we put there since we were going to have the same kids all day long we had 22 of them we were going to be putting their names on their desks and you know all of that and so it was a lot of fun getting the classroom ready it was fun for open house and seeing these kids come in and you know welcome us and like I said they did they saw me from the from the very first moment so they welcomed me as their teacher and um, I'll tell you this class was very very cool um, usually you have all different levels of learners in a class which is which is great and I actually like having different levels but this was my first full-on teaching experience and the class that we had just so happened to be um, just so happened to be all kids that are on grade level um, now I did not know the difference at the time and my supervising teacher you know she was like man of all years for me to get a class like this and it's during a time I have a student teacher and I have to share them and I said what do you mean um, and she's like no if to you she says but I've been teaching for 13 years 13 years and I have never had a class like this and I will never have another class like this again and I have to share them I am um, I even have to give them up for two weeks and yeah it's true when you uh, at least where I'm from the program I came from when you go to uh, when you finally have all of the subjects that you are teaching you are in complete control the supervising teacher cannot even be in the classroom so yeah um and she was like i did not want to give up this class at all and i mean they were so well behaved um you know if they started talking and i needed to get their attention i could say give me five one two by the time i got to two they had their hands folded um or ready for their pen they had their paper out listening heads up whole nine yards i mean like wow <laughs> i don't get that now um but that was amazing and i remember one of the last things that my student te or my supervising teacher told me and she says in some ways i hate that this is the class that you did your student teaching with and it's because they were so wonderful you didn't have discipline problems you know there were no discipline problems there were no uh, issues you didn't have learning issues with them and so you're kind of going off into the real world without a real world experience because I'm telling you this is not 
if you go in thinking that this is what you're going to that this is what you're going to get you're not um and so you know it was it was unreal and i didn't understand exactly what she meant until i actually got my first real class <laughs> and i'll tell you about that in just a minute so one of the things that i told you i'm not great at history right but yet i had to teach these kids history so in order to prepare for history i would take the book home and i would read what i was going to be teaching them ahead of them obviously you know because i want it to you know at least sound like i knew what i was talking about even though history was not my groove was not my subject um and you know we were learning the american revolution and i even tried to make it fun you know i had a project where in project they were uh, making quilt squares um you know we gave them uh, square cloths and we gave them uh, fabric markers and they had to create a design on their square that represented the uh, American Revolution uh, what they learned and then they were supposed to you know when they showed us their square they were supposed to present their their little report on what they would learned about the American Revolution and uh, my supervising teacher you know she knew how to quilt um, I didn't and so she then took the squares and she quilted them and she actually kept that uh, she actually kept that quilt up in her room as far as I know she still has it um, and the other thing that was cool about this class is when I left, um, you know, of course, I left right after Christmas um, was when my uh, super uh, my student teaching ended, and I had actually gotten a job. Strangely enough, I had found a job in the middle of the year, uh, which I was happy to be able to have a job straight from student teaching. And so, as a Christmas slash going away present. Um, the parents of these teachers went out and made me a name plaque of beveled glass that had it was it had my uh, school at the time the school I was going to uh, logo on it and y'all oh my god I still have that plaque I still put it up on um, my desk at school and I get compliments on it every single year. Kids are like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and I, it helps me to remember that first class. And so even though I wasn't with them for the whole year, you know, they hold a special place in my heart. Now, when I go to my first, <laughs> my first year of teaching you know it's it's in a class that they have not had an actual teacher all they have had is subs for you know two months because the teacher that was hired um well let's just say that he he, he wasn't uh he he didn't need to be in the classroom and you know one of the questions that was asked me one of the first questions was was I gonna show them my belly button and I'm like excuse me am I am I gonna what and they're like yeah the last one would show us growths on his belly button like do, are you gonna show us growths and defaults and, and, and stuff like that I'm like no no like I that flabbergasted me and to be even even be asked that because this was an eighth grade class and I was just like wow you have got to be kidding me and you know these kids had also been used to getting away with absolutely everything because they had had a you know different subs not even the same sub different subs 
for two months. So no learning going on. So I pretty much had to take them um, all the way back, uh, essentially to the beginning, because you know they had math testing coming up, and this is when we had FCAT, and I had to prepare them. You know, I had to get them ready for FCAT. So I, I, you know, I buckled down. We did some fast lessons, but I'm telling you, there came a day when I honestly thought that my teaching career was going to end as soon as it started. Um, and I had a kid who when, you know, usually when you say that people are climbing the walls, like it's, it's a, it's an expression. It's not really, they're not really climbing the walls. Uh, no, this kid was literally climbing the blinds literally climbing the blinds and you know I, I was still new you know I had younger kids at home because you know I started teaching at the age of 30 which I know is not technically young young but it's still fairly young you know I was 30 years old I had young kids and I saw this and my mom my brain went into mommy mode versus teacher mode because I mean hello I'm still brand new had not experienced behavior like this in my student teaching class and so before I knew it the words popped out of my mouth get down from there before I spank you oh oh a pen could drop in that room and the kid he took it all in stride he like he slowly turned around to me and he looked at me and he's like, Oh, you gonna spank me. And he said it like that. I was like, Oh Lord. I'm like, you know, I will send you to the office if you do not get off those blinds. And oh, I I literally thought I mean I was ready to start packing up my classroom and going, Oh well <laughs> that was an expensive little journey into teaching. Um, but no, I my principal you know I, I went and talked to the principal and I explained and she said you know you do need some classroom management and she sent me to a amazing seminar um, I think his name is Harry Wong and he did this book called the first days of school and I'm telling you he changed me around as far as what I know for teaching and using I mean and it's like it's like stuff that you go wow you know I like I should have known that I should have known that just policies and procedures but that first year like I almost <laughs> I almost after just that little bit decided that I didn't want to teach because I mean but then um, I found that after you have a class from the beginning and you're not trying to come in from the end you're not trying to come in with a class that has experienced really uh, no learning and full playing uh, it's it is a lot see mm, every now and then when my tweezers I go boop, boop, and they go oh, God. okay oh well I will find that one later it'll probably be stuck to my forehead or something later okay so um, that first year was was tough and technically it was just half a year and then uh, the next year was a little bit easier um, and then after that you know I got my groove down I got down knowing what could I what I could do what I could not do as far as like how to reach kids and um, it's gotten a lot easier but I will never forget that moment when I literally thought that my entire teaching career was over before it had even really started because you know we are human we may be teachers and we are held to a higher standard but we are human and as humans we make mistakes and we have emotions and so I work really hard now to try to control my emotions and trust me, whoo, huh, I have been tested numerous times, but I have passed each one year, you know, 
ever since that first one. That first one was my, that one was my eye opener. My, ooh, cannot do that again. No, 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 no. Um, and, you know, I even had some, like, that class that even, uh, when the original teacher that was there, like I said, um, I mean, that teacher went beyond just showing them body parts. They, they, they saw all kinds of stuff that the, those kids did not need to see. Um, but they would take Sharpie markers and... I did not know this until then, but if you shake up a Sharpie marker a lot, you can make it explode. And yes, they made it explode all over the walls, which couldn't be gotten out because it's permanent Sharpie markers. Oh, wow, y'all. I am telling you. And the kid that did it was not even like like he was proud of it he was proud he's like do you see what i did i made a marker explode and i'm like really dude you did this why you know and he's like because i wanted to and now this particular kid was also funny because uh he was into uh rock and roll and heavy metal now you got to remember i was 30 years old and i still like you know i am one of those that yes I do like rock music, okay? I listen to rock music. I listen to some heavy metal, um, but the older heavy metal, not the not the newer. Some of the newer ones I don't really care for. It all depends on who it is. But so he was in the classroom and he kept messing with. He had his um, his guitar case in there and he kept messing with his amp plug, which is this huge plug if you don't know it's this huge plug that plugs into the amp and then um you know to be able to amplify the sound of the uh the guitar or the bass and he kept messing with it and i knew know that he wasn't paying attention and so i was like hey stop messing with that amp plug and pay attention Lord, there, stop the class again because he literally stood up and it took 10 minutes for him to stop exclaiming, Oh my gosh, you know what an amp plug is? <gasps> and I'm like, Wow, you act like we're like dinosaurs. Like, I'm 30 years old, dude. I'm not a dinosaur. Yes, I know what it is, but no, we're not going to. Come on, we got to get back to what we're doing here, okay? We got to, we got to get back in, into the groove, into the groove and they you know they eventually did settle down but i'm telling you strangely enough just hearing that i knew what an amp plug was and that uh i listened to modern rock it seemed to form a bond with these kids that from that point on like they actually tried really really hard and I got good testing results from them um, at the end of the year, you know, because they they actually did apply themselves. They realized they had a teacher that was really wanting to teach them, was wanting them to learn, and so it made all of the difference, I'm telling you. And we had really decent, I mean, we didn't have great, great scores, you know, because I didn't have them from the beginning, but we did have decent scores. And... Uh, I was really proud of them and I did watch that I did go and uh, watch that class when they graduated and they saw me and they ran up to me and they hugged me and they remembered me and that that moment that's what you know teaches about is when they when they can come up to you and you know that you've made a difference and they thank you and they show such appreciation you know that's why we do it that's that's why we put ourselves through all of the the heartache and the headaches and the everything else is because in the end it's about the kids and it's about making a difference in their lives and when you see them even though you taught them in eighth grade and they're seniors in high school and they still remember you and they come and give you a hug and exclaim over i can't believe you came to our graduation oh my gosh you know 
that that makes it that makes it worthwhile all right so I'm gonna stop the whipping chat part here I've gotten uh, gotten some way through it there <laughs> um, gotten most of the black <laughs> um, okay so time for the giveaway um, okay let me put because I don't want to mess up my stickies and I will if I'm not careful I have I've stuck my piece of there we go okay so it's not much guys but what I have is I have this gold and rhinestone dragon I mean it is it's metal it's heavy okay so I have this one and it is beautiful guys I have one just like it and I love it so I've got this cover minder and I have a heart-shaped container with a piece of heart wax. So if you have Diamond Art Club, like what this comes from, you have a holder to hold your, uh, your heart wax. And um, I thought I was going to have some pins, but I wasn't able to get them. So... Um, I will have a pin for the big final giveaway with the canvas but um, so this is just a little something to say uh, thank you and like I said this this one is a like it's a larger one and it's a really really good cover minder I got this one from uh, Bess uh, Shine Shop Designs and I love 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 mine okay so what I decided to do was a random number generator okay and I had for Lumina I had 20 responses okay so I'm gonna put in 20 right here and I'm gonna hit generate 13 Oh, okay. Well, I can't. Let's see. I'm trying to hide. 13 is GMR. Woo! Congratulations, GMR. You are the winner of my first Whip and Chat giveaway. All right. Now, remember, guys, this is also a Whip and Chat, and so you're going to want to make sure that you fill out if you have not filled out the google form that is in the description you want to make sure that you fill that out okay because that's how i can contact you because i'll be contacting um gmr to let her know that she has won um so you need to fill that out and you need to make a comment on my video you also need to make sure that if you want double if you want to be able to get entered into kara's the principal painter diamond painting that's who i'm doing this collab with i should have said that at the beginning Woo! so sorry guys um i, I just kind of assumed that y'all knew that i am doing this collaboration with kara who is the principal painter diamond painting and so you need to go to her channel and she put up her video yesterday and i'm putting up mine today this is friday and um make a comment on hers and if you have not filled out the form because it's the same form fill out the form uh we're both linked to it and we can both see both forms fill out the form make a comment on the video and you can be entered in into the the dailies and then uh you will also be entered into the grand prize at the end so you want to make sure that you do that to get as many as you can in all right so i guess that is all for me for now and so i just want to say what i always say reach for the stars grab hold hold on and never let go all right until my next video oh oh see i keep forgetting this part every time if you like this video please hit the like button down below and if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to subscribe i would love to have you as part of the diamonds family 
um, hit that subscribe button. Just make sure that you hit the bell notification. That way you know whenever I upload a video because, you know, I don't have a set schedule just yet. I try to do the ones I can. All right. So now <laughs> I will leave you until my next video, guys. Bye. Oh.